I can use trigonometry to find the missing side of a right triangle when I can't otherwise find that side. For example, looking at this diagram, I know in the past we've used uh, Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side, but look, there's two sides that I don't know. I can't use Pythagorean theorem if there's two unknown sides, so I'm stuck using trigonometry. So let's go ahead and figure out how this is going to work. First thing first, mark the angle that they give you, uh, and never, ever, ever use the right angle. Use one of the acute angles. So that angle is 32 degrees. If I needed to, I could find that top angle because I know the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if you wanted to find that angle, you could find it and use that is your angle, but well, we don't really need to, so why bother with it in this case? So I'm going to use this angle. Now, uh, next step, let's identify what our three sides are called. Typically, what I do first is I identify the hypotenuse, because that's usually easiest for me. I can see that that's the side across from the right angle, so that's my hypotenuse. Uh, the side that I walk, if I were to walk away from that angle, the side that I would run into next would be the opposite side. So the side across from that angle is this 11 side, the opposite. And then uh, all that's left is the adjacent side, this, ang this side that is next to the angle. Now, if you notice, there's one side that doesn't have any information on it. In, that case, in this case, it's the hypotenuse. So I'm going to kind of ignore that side and just worry about the opposite and the adjacent. Next step is, okay, I'm, I'm working with opposite, I'm working with adjacent. I want to go ahead and look back at Sokotoa. So either in your notes or from memory, uh, go ahead and find Sokotoa or see Sokotoa in your head. And what I want to do is I want to look for the part of Sokotoa that uses those two sides I'm looking for. In this case, the opposite and using the adjacent. Looking at the three parts of Sokotoa, I can see the one I want to work with is Toa. It's got opposite and it's got adjacent in it, telling me I'm going to be working with the T part of Sokotoa or tangent. So this particular problem, I'm going to be using tangent to find my missing side because those are the sides I'm working with. So I'm going to write tangent and then always tangent of the angle that I'm looking at. So tangent of 32, and I like to put that over 1. We're going to do this as a, as a proportion problem. And then equals. Well, tangent we said was opposite over adjacent. My opposite side is 11 my adjacent side is x. Because I have a proportion, I'm going to go ahead and use cross multiplication to solve this. So cross multiplying this way, I get, oops, I'm going to go back a step. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and find out what the tangent of 32 is. So I've done that on my calculator, which is what I'd recommend. If you're using a trig table, you could look this up uh, in a trig table. But I used my calculator, and I found the tangent of 32 to be about 0.624 or 6, yeah, 6249 uh, if I round that off. Uh, and four decimals is usually a, a good number to round to. So a tangent of 32 is about 0.6249. Now I'm going to cross multiply. So if I cross multiply this way, 11 times 1 is just 11. And when I cross multiply the other way, x times 0.6249 is just 0.6249x. Now I want to solve for x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0.6249, divide by 0.6249, and I end up with an x value that is approximately equal to 17 point, let's just round to one decimal point, so about 17.6 for that missing side. If you think you got it, go ahead and pause the video and try that next uh, example. Otherwise, let it run. I'll go ahead and uh, work through one more so you have one more example to listen to. All right, so again, that first step is find your angle. In this case, here's the angle they gave me, so that's the angle I'm going to be looking from and uh, basing my names off of. Never, never, ever, ever use that right angle. And then, like I said, if you want to find that angle and work with it, you can, but there's really no need to at this point. So let's work with that angle. Figure out what your three sides are. I, again, start with hypotenuse. That's usually easiest for me. Next up, I find the opposite side. That's the angle or the side that we'd run into if we walked away from the angle. So this side must be opposite. This side over here is left over. It must be the adjacent. It's the side that's right next to the angle. Again, uh, we're left with a side that doesn't really matter. In this case, it's the hypotenuse. Again, there's nothing on that side. We don't need to work with it, so I'm going to ignore that side. Look at Sokotoa and figure out what part of Sokotoa we need to use. I'm working with the opposite side, and I'm working with the adjacent side. So find the part of Sokotoa that uses O and A, and again, you're going to see that, well, it's tangent one more time. Uh, tangent has the O and tangent has the A in it, so I'm working with tangent. So let's set up our equation. I'm going to do tangent and then always of the angle, so in this case tangent of 56. I'm going to put that over 1. Sorry, I'm doing some calculations real quick. Uh, and then I'm going to set that equal to, remember, TOA is opposite, which we said was x, 
over the adjacent, which this time is 13. Notice this time the x is on top, last time x was on bottom, that just depends. So make sure you're setting up your ratio carefully. Uh, the calculation I was doing was finding the tangent of 56, so I'm going to cross that out. I found the tangent of 56 to be about uh, 1.4826, if I round that off to four decimal places. Uh, I found that on my calculator. You can find that from a trig table. If you're not getting that answer or that number, check the mode of your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode and not radian mode or you'll be getting the wrong answers. At this point, let's use cross multiplication to solve this proportion. So cross multiply this way. 1 times x is just x. When I cross multiply the other way, I have to do 13. Let me do that right now. Times 1.4826. Uh, and that's all I need to do because x is by itself already. So I again will round to one decimal place for my final answer. I end up with an x value of about 19.3. Depending on how you rounded, you may be a bit different, 19.2 or 19.4. Uh, I'm not super picky as long as you're within uh, the ballpark, you should be fine. So about 19.3 should be that missing side.